Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of my Mega Man 64 glitch demonstration. In this part I'm going to be analyzing which events and game triggers uh, happen and how they relate to each other. We're going to find out which cutscenes you can skip, which ones you can't, which scenes are important, and what triggers what, basically. So as you can see, I've entered the Cardin subgate early, right after the City Hall fight pretty early in the game. None of the triggers for roles conversations have happened, but I can still interact with this console here like normal. But none of the other, there's two other moments here where Roll is supposed to talk to me and she, she didn't. As you can see, I'm trying to get through this door and this door actually doesn't work yet. There's a certain trigger that we'll find out later is needed to open the door and I haven't done it yet. so. I can't actually complete the ruins yet and get the yellow refractor. Bear in mind, we ha I haven't done the mission yet where you actually get into the Cardin ruins and Roll comes with her support car, and you have to do you know do that little battle with servbots. So when you come out of here, your support car is there, but you're behind the gate and you haven't rammed it open yet. And you can talk to these serve bots and they have their normal responses. As you can see, I can't even get back into the ruins from where I came from, so I just have to go back in the support car and find out what else we can do. So when we go the other way, the normal way I guess, the tanks haven't shown up yet because it's not yet time for me to do the card and subgate. And the gate is still there, my support car is gone from this area, so there's nothing strange here. So let's advance the plot a little bit. We're gonna go to the Yas Plains and go fight Marwolf, fight Teasel, and get this boss fight out of the way and see what happens next. Alright, before we do that, there's a couple of things I want to get out of the way, including this amazing feat that I've managed to do here. This is uh, one of the entrances to the main gate. Look at that, I managed to climb on the edge while I was falling and get behind the door. Sadly, I can't open the door from this way, but that was cool as hell. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you try and fight Bruno when it's not time to fight him yet. What's behind door number one? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's a little disappointing, but the fight doesn't start, and you're just left in this empty room. Surprised they even allow you to get in here, but it's basically the room where the cutscene is supposed to take place, but because we haven't advanced through the story enough, there's just nothing here. I tried my best to make this video clip a little brighter, but the textures are just really dark, and there's not really much I can do about it. Some of the collision in this room is not really perfect. I can't imagine they intended you to be in here, considering what we've done so far. Right here I'm just jumping around, showing you can jump on all the things in this room, but there's really nothing to do in here at all. Nothing you can interact with. You can't leave. Not even by walkie-talkie, There's you're just stuck. So essentially you kind of just have to reset your game at this point, which is why I didn't want to do this before. So I reset my game and now I'm back in South Cardin, and I can actually enter the Cardin subgate the normal way. It finally lets me in because I have the Class A license now, which is what you get when you finish some Marwolf battle and you go back to City Hall. Still unable to get any further into the subgate. Roll still hasn't talked to us when she's supposed to, so there's nothing else to do here. 
gonna have to go a little further on. All right, here's where it gets really interesting. So when we go to South Carden by foot, we hit this old lady, and then she tells us that the Cerberus are attacking. That initiates the escort mission in this area. But it's going to be a little weird now because we can call a roll in this area and have her pick us up and bring us right outside the subgate. So I'll demonstrate that. Once I leave, I'm behind the gate as usual, but then the cutscene starts again. So I can choose to continue on. And once I do that, Roll will come to the rescue to start the escort mission. But since I called Roll and she picked me up and the support car is behind the gate and the support car is also in the beginning of the area for the escort mission there are now two support cars in the same place I'm just gonna let you guys watch this, this is gonna be hilarious never gets old There are two support cars in the same spot. They're both identical, they both work, you can enter both of them. And you just made two copies of Roll and Data, apparently. It's too bad this glitch isn't more useful, but it's pretty satisfying seeing a clone of the support car just sitting right next to the real one assuming any of them are any one is more real than the other so we could finally start doing the card and sub gate after all this time I, the door triggers will finally work roll will never ever get to say her opening lines in this sub gate so i guess that's a race forever so i'm going to skip ahead a little bit uh, but before i do i want to show you that you can actually make this jump that I'm about to do right now by holding the, one of the trigger buttons and strafing and then jumping as straight as you can. It gives you a little bit extra speed and lets you clear some gaps that you otherwise shouldn't be able to clear. The strafe jump gives you just enough distance to clear that gap on one go. Make sure you grab the jump springs in this area. Uh, because you can't clear the game without it, and you can't finish the next subgate without having the jump upgrade, so make sure you grab it before you leave. Also, instead of leaving and then creating the jump spring part, so you can get over this ledge and back to the ruins, a well-timed jump here will actually get you across. Same kind of strafe jump as before. All you have to do is just stand right on top of the elevator controls, kind of face toward where you're going to jump to and then hold one of the triggers and then jump for it. Here it is again in slow motion. I recommend you try and press Z and A at the same time or whatever trigger button and the jump button at the same time and just hold the control stick towards the edge. So now we're ready for Lake June and getting the red refractor but before we do that let's have Roll make the drill arm for us, equip it, and head out into the ruins to see if we could get to the Lake June subgate without doing that horrendous water battle. To get to Lake June, it's much more out of the way, but first we're gonna take a visit to the other subgate, uh, Closer Woods. Uh, there's also an entrance to one of the ruins over there. Uh, now that we have the drill arm, we can just make it over there no problem, just by going underground. Uh, this is a long hallway with a lot of different uh, items and goodies here. You can make some busted parts, I believe. Uh, I guess getting this stuff early is kind of nice, but it's not totally awesome. It doesn't really do a whole lot for you. Now that you have the drill arm, you can just get a few of this stuff out of the way. So right here is the entrance to the Closer Woods subgate. 
as you might imagine, since this is a uh, subgate we're, we're going to be doing at the end of the game, it's not yet time to do it, and therefore the doors won't work. So just as in the last area, trying to get anything done here early is not an option. This area doesn't have much in it except um, target sensor, I guess. If that's something you're interested in. I don't know. But yeah, none of the doors work in this area, so... Unfortunately, not much to do here. It would have been neat if you could be here early and then, since you're so close to it, activate the elevators. Get some of the ID cards early. Would have been kind of neat, but I guess they were crafty and made sure that you know, can't really do things out of order that have to hit certain triggers to make next area happen, I guess. Right, so this leads uh, back to the Yas Plains. There's an entrance here to go in the ruins. It's kind of neat that all the ruins are connected in this game and that eventually when you get the drill arm, every area will be accessible underground. It might take a long while to navigate it, but Everything's connected, and that door I just skipped over there it doesn't it only leads to a few buster parts, I think. Nothing really worth exploring. So now let's go back and check out early late June. I've included a map of all of the ruins and how they connect to each other in the description in case new or old players might not remember exactly where to go and how to get here. But it's a lot of navigation, but eventually you'll find yourself over here where you can use a drill arm and access some more areas here. There's a lot of stuff to grab in this area, like buster parts and uh, other items that roll will be able to make special weapons out of. But uh, anyways, we're in Lake June now. Enemies here, these guys are really annoying, but anyways, the doors won't open, of course, because we haven't hit that particular trigger that opens them. I'm assuming it's the water battle where you fight the bonds again. So, yeah, this is just one long hallway, none of the doors work. So, we can also just go through the other side and continue exploring the ruins. Alright, so I skipped ahead a little bit past repairing the boat, past the water battle. So we're at Lake June normally now. So we can enter and finally finish this. Unfortunately, we can't do this one early either. This is not a game where sequence breaking is a really big thing, you know? So, this is basically going to be the only cutscene skip I think we can do. When you finish getting the red refractor and you face off with that giant reaver bot, what you can do is use the drill arm that you're not supposed to have yet to go through the ruins and just go take the long way back, all the way back to Carden Forest or wherever. Uh, and then you'll basically get back to the main island without having to watch that cutscene that happens after you leave with the boat. So that's pretty neat. So what you can do is just call Roll immediately and as soon as you talk to her, she'll tell you about how the red ref refractor that you just got can repair the flutter, so then you can repair the flutter. Over here I just confirmed that even though we didn't take the boat back from the subgate, that the boat is right back uh, at the boathouse. So now that the flutter is repaired, I had some experimenting I wanted to do. I wanted to see if the doors would work for the for the sub ruins, and they really do. So you don't actually have to fly the flutter to the closer wood sub gate. You can take the long way around. That's why I mean it's not useful for a speed run or anything like that. But if you go the long way around and come into the subgate from underground, you can get here without ever flying to it with a flutter. And that's really amazing. You can also get the ID cards, you can reactivate the elevators, Pre pretty much finish this whole dungeon just as you would normally, except you didn't fly the flutter 
to get here. So this begs the question, if you didn't fly the flutter here, what the hell are you going to find when you try and leave the normal way? Because the only way out of here is with the flutter. So let's see what happens. I found this a little humorous. She starts talking to you about the finding a door when you come down, you fall down the, the pit in the room. But if you go the opposite way, she still says the same thing, even though you didn't fall. So, let's exit and see what we find. Holy shit, you actually don't go back in the flutter. You're actually on the ledge leading to the closer woods subgate. It's amazing that you're actually even allowed to be up here. I figured it would just put you back in the flutter somewhere, or basically do anything but this. Since there's not much up here, might as well try and go back in. Only a text box comes up that says sample. I don't know why on earth it says sample and why it won't let you back in, but if I venture to guess, I think the game is really confused. And I think we confused it. Anyways, enough of trying to get in this door that won't open. Once we go back to that control room in the closer wood sub gate, and we get that cutscene right here where we see the main gate activating. I wanted to see if this cutscene is the thing that opens the main gate. Instead of flying back after this cutscene with the flutter and activating the, the pirate attack, the air battle, I want to see if I can skip that by going through the ruins. Because, again, we're not supposed to have the drill arm or access to any of the ruins and all the connected passageways yet. So I'm going to try and skip the air battles now. If you could believe it, the main gate is closed. Watching that cutscene and getting all the ID cards doesn't do shit. Still not open. This pretty much confirms that it's the pirate air battle that's the trigger for opening the main gate. And there's no other way of getting in it without having that battle and going through that. Well, actually, it'd be more accurate to say that Flying the flutter to the subgate is a thing that lets you have the pirate air battle, which lets you uh, fight Bruno and go to the main gate for the first time. So pretty much in that order. This cutscene where Mega Man uh, accidentally walks in on roll and dressing isn't really supposed to happen until after you're done with the air battle. But it happens now, I'm assuming, because I did the main gate cutscene where it opened up, you know, with the ID cards. So the game probably thinks, I'm done with that, therefore, when I go into Roll's room, there should be that cutscene. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the entire air battle for you, and look at that, the main gate is open, we can finally go inside. Since we can finally get in here, we can open the subsidies from that computer terminal when I get to it and we can also face Bruno. To finish off this video I've made a list of flags, in-game flags that need to be set in order to complete other parts of the game. So starting from the top there's a lady in South Carden. As soon as you talk to her you'll be able to not only enter Carden Ruins, but you'll actually be able to open the doors and complete it. Remember that with the drill arm, using that glitch to get the drill arm early, uh, we can get to all the subgates early in the game. But just because we can get to all the subgates doesn't mean we can complete them. So visiting that lady outside after fighting Marwolf will let you complete the Carden Ruins. Doing the water battle will let you complete Lake June. Repairing the flutter, that cutscene allows you to actually open the doors and close your woods. It will allow you to finish that place. The cutscene where you tell Roll to use a flutter to get to the subgate for the first time, you tell her to go to close your woods, that actually activates the, uh, the ability to leave the closer woods through the flutter. Otherwise, as we saw before in this video, 
if you don't ever bring the flutter to the subgate at all, when you try and leave, you'll actually just end up right back outside the subgate uh, with no flutter, and then you won't be able to come back in because the door will say sample. This next one's kind of weird. The main gate opening cutscene where you enter the three ID cards and you see it opening for the first time. If you see that cutscene but you don't ever have the flutter take you to the subgate, entering Roll's room in Carden Forest will start that cutscene where you know you catch Roll undressing and she tells you to knock, uh, which is just a weird thing. Don't really know why it works that way. Fighting the pirates in the air battle is the thing that lets you open the main gate, and opening the subsidies from the terminal inside the main gate is the thing that actually causes the subsidies to appear, and it also sets up the Bruno fight. If you try and fight Bruno before opening the subsidies, you'll still get that soft lock room where you can't do anything inside. So you really do have to open the subsidies before. There's really no way around it. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Hope everyone enjoyed watching this. Uh, hope people got to learn a little bit more about this game and the glitches it has to offer. Thanks for watching.